Richard McSorley and I will be discussing the float type carburetor. The float type carburetor is so named because it uses a float to regulate the amount of fuel that enters the carburetor. In a float type carburetor, fuel is stored in the float chamber. The amount of fuel allowed to flow into the float chamber is controlled by a float operated needle valve installed in the fuel inlet. With this type of system, as fuel enters the flow chamber, the float rises and begins to close the needle valve. Once the fuel in the flow chamber is at a correct level, the float completely closes or seats the needle valve to stop the flow of fuel. A carburetor float is typically constructed of brass or some composite material. When the brass is used, the float is hollow and air sealed inside the float, providing its buoyancy. To allow air to enter and leave the flow chamber, as the fuel level rises and falls, all flow chambers are vented. A typical vent passage opens directly to the atmosphere or into the air intake. This way, the air pressure within the flow chamber is always the same as the atmosphere. Okay, so I'll be talking about the economizer and the acceleration pump. So basically, when the throttle lever is below full throttle, the economizer is seated to provide maximum efficiency. When the throttle of a carburetor is rapidly opened, the airflow through the carburetor increases before the discharge nozzle has an opportunity to increase the amount of fuel flow. This delayed response creates a momentary leaning of the fuel-air mixture that can cause an engine to initially stagger before accelerating. Because of this, there's a mechanical linkage between the throttle lever and the acceleration pump and the economizer. So when the throttle lever is at full throttle, the economizer unseats to provide a richer fuel-air mixture to help cool the cylinders, and the acceleration pump comes down to provide more fuel. This makes it so the engine can accelerate smoothly and quickly until the discharge nozzle can deliver fuel at a rate that is proportional to the airflow rate. The engine operates at idle speed. The throttle valve is nearly closed. This limits airflow through the venturi and also causes differential pressure to be weak. So weak, in fact, that an insufficient amount of fuel can be drawn through the main discharge nozzle. Because of this, a small passage, or multiple, are drilled into the carburetor barrel near the edge of the throttle valve. These discharge ports make sure the engine works consistently at idle speed. An idle metering jet in the emulsion tube regulates the amount of fuel that can be drawn from the main discharge system, and an idle air bleed emulsifies the fuel. The throttle plates create a venturi at the discharge port, and this creates a low pressure that draws the fuel from the idle discharge ports and enables the fuel to be discharged into the airstream. Most carburetors have an adjustable thumb screw to control the amount of fuel put into the airstream, and as you can see with this one, it has a mixture control knob instead of the thumb screw. By turning the thumb screw in, it leans the idle mixture, which means it reduces the fuel that's discharged. So, by turning it the opposite way, it adds fuel to the mixture, or rich. Alright, so the main discharge nozzle is located at the smallest area, or diameter, of the Venturi tube. So the main air bleed is screwed into the same area, and this allows air to come in and help atomize the fuel before it being discharged by the main discharge nozzle. So as more air is being sucked through the Venturi tube, we the air in the flow chamber is, press is atmospheric pressure, so more fuel is pressed through the main metering valve. And therefore we have more fuel being discharged at the main nozzle discharge. So in the end, all the actual metering fuel is accomplished at the main metering jet. And this is located between the flow chamber and the discharge nozzle. So the fuel will come from the tanks, through the selector valve, in through the strainer, and meet up with the carburetor. 
but with some of that fuel comes some contaminants. Some of these contaminants get blocked by the strainer while others pass through to the carburetor inlet. Let's see how this carburetor actually works. Fuel flows through the strainer and the strainer catches any contamination such as this bad guy. Once the strainer gets rid of contamination, only clean fuel flows in the chamber. From normal cruise condition, fuel flows through the mixture control and metal jet. Once proper amount of fuel is metered, the differential air pressure in the chamber and the venturi jaws and discharges fuel from the main discharge nozzle. Every makes better fuel vaporization and also breaks surface tension. For full solar condition, fuel flows through economizer and acceleration pump in addition to main metering jet and mixture control, then fuel discharge. This is how this flow type carburetor works. Thank you for watching us and hope you enjoyed it.